Okay, we are finishing the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16. Here we be. Jesus has been crucified. We leave off in chapter 15, where they rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. All the guys were so brave. I'll never deny you. I'll never leave you. I'll always be with you. And uh, they fled. <laughs> the guys are nowhere to be found. But the women are hanging around. The women are hanging around. And then it says in chapter 16, when the Sabbath was over, so they've waited some time here, Mary Magdalene, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. So the ones to see where his body was laid at the tomb were the ladies. The ones who get up early in the morning and go to the tomb after the Sabbath, uh, there's actually been a couple of Sabbaths here, um, are the ladies. Uh, the guys are nowhere to be found. Now, I don't know if there's a lesson in there. I suppose that maybe you can come up with your own lesson from that. <laughs> it doesn't say that's a lesson. Can something be inferred? Can we run with that? Maybe you would like to run with that idea that the guys are gone and the ladies are there. Hmm. Well, they're bringing spices because they they think he's dead. Uh, that their leader, the teacher, the one whom they loved, the one who they followed is dead. They're going to go anoint him and they're going to fix his body up so they can um, bury him for good and say their goodbyes. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, so we're doing it early, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who's going to roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? How are we going to get in there? Well, now the other Gospels tell us that uh, Pilate told uh, the Romans that what they needed to do was to he told the Jewish leaders and the Romans that they needed to seal that thing up so that nobody could roll that stone away and that there would be some penalty, even maybe the penalty of death, for breaking the Roman seal and getting into that tomb because the religious leaders said he said he would rise from the dead. And so if, if somebody comes and steals him away, in fact, in Matthew, that was the story they came up with. They said to the guards, tell him that, while, that you fell asleep and while you were asleep, his disciples came and took his body. Now, that's the stupid ex excuse in, in the world. How in the world, if they were sleeping, do they know what in the world happened? But uh, people say things. But when they looked up the ladies, in verse 4, they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled away. Hmm. Well, Matthew tells us that there was an earthquake and there was an angel sitting on there. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. What's going on? This isn't the way it's supposed to be. Something's happening here. Well, don't be alarmed. It's an angel. Angels often say, don't be afraid when people encounter them. Why? Because you're probably afraid when you see, you see an angel. He said, you're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. Well, that's the Easter story. That's the gospel, really. The gospel is that he's risen from the dead. The gospel isn't just that he died. He certainly did die, but he's risen from the dead, never to die again. And so that's the completion of the whole thing. The, the gospel, according to 1 Corinthians 14, is he came according to the scriptures. He died. He was buried. He's dead, right? He was crucified. He was, he was buried. And he rose again from the dead. And then he appeared to people and changed their lives. And so he's still appearing to people and changing their lives. And he'll be the judge to come, the ru to rule and to resurrect people and then judge the living and the dead. He said, you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's risen. He's not here. See the place where they laid him. This is where he was. But go and tell his disciples, Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee. And there you will see him just as he told you. Jesus said that after he rose from the dead, to, that he would go into the Galilee and meet them. Now, these guys forgot all about this. They were, their heads were somewhere else. Trembling and bewildered. 
The woman went out and fled from the tomb. In Matthew, it says that they were frightened and filled with joy. Now, uh, there's some emotion going on there, right? There's some adrenaline pump in here, trembling and bewildered. The woman went out and they fled from the tomb and they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Um, well, they eventually they go out and they find the disciples, just like uh, the angel told them to go and find the disciples. And then it says in verse 9, When Jesus rose on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. Now, we don't know what kind of demons they were and what kind of behavior she was into. But she went and told those who had been with him and who were mourning and weeping. Uh, all of the guys were, you know, bummed out, gathering together. Oh, man, you know what happened? And when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen them, they didn't believe it. Even though Jesus told them this would happen, they didn't believe it. Uh, how much is that like us? And afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to them while they were walking on, on the, on the, uh, to, in the country. And they, these returned and reported to the rest. But they didn't believe them either. So now several people are testifying they've seen Jesus risen from the dead. And they're just not believing it. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating, and he rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had been risen. And then he said to them this, and this is the command to all of us. This is what we're supposed to be doing right now. Go into all of the world. Well, where would all of the world be? North America, South America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Antarctica. Go everywhere, into the cities, into the urban areas, into the countryside, into the, into the suburban areas. Go to the rich, go to the poor, go to the broken, go to the needy, go to everybody. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Preach the gospel to everyone. Proclaim that Jesus has risen from the dead, that he came according to the scriptures. He died on the cross. He was, he was, buried, he was buried in the tomb. He rose from the dead. He appeared to many people. He's still appearing to people, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Whoever believes in his baptized will be saved, but whoever doesn't believe will be condemned. Really, what it tells us in uh, John chapter uh, 3, verse 17, is you're condemned already. You don't really have to get condemned. You already are condemned. You're a sinner. And so if you don't believe, then you don't receive eternal life. How do you receive eternal life? By believing. And these signs will accompany those who believe. So there will be signs. What will be those signs? Bumper stickers, rings, uh, things to wear on our lapels. In my name, they will drive out demons. Well, uh, demons still exist and demons still inhabit people and drive people crazy. They will speak in new tongues. Uh, that could be the gift of tongues as spoken of in Corinthians. It could be that you stop swearing. You stop talking nasty. You stop gossiping. But it could be glossolalia, where God gives this gift of speaking in tongues. It says he who speaks in an unknown tongue doesn't speak to people, but speaks to God. It's a heavenly language, prayer language. They'll speak in new tongues. They'll pick up snakes with their hands. Uh, now, this happened to the Apostle Paul in the book of Acts. Uh, a viper jumped out of the fire and bit him, and they thought, oh, you know, this is judgment from God. And But uh, Paul was fine. And when they drink any deadly poison, it won't hurt them at all. Ooh, um, well, we're not supposed to go around drinking deadly poison. But let me tell you a story like that. Uh, some years ago, I was uh, with a friend of mine who had a band, a couple of guys um, that had a band. And we got invited to go play at this party. Now, it was not a Christian party. It was very much a non-Christian party. There was an awful lot of uh, people that were immoral people there. Uh, there were an awful lot of drugs going on there. There was an awful lot of drinking going on there. There was an awful lot of homosexuality going on there. And um, they said that at a certain time in the night, they would let the Christian band play. Now, this was in a house. This was a house party. And so the band was set up there, and we were waiting for our time and talking to everybody and having a great time. And, uh, you know, people are starting to get a little loopy as the night is going on, and it wasn't the time for the band to go on yet. And this young guy comes running into into the kitchen and he's yelling who ate the deviled eggs who ate the deviled eggs who ate the deviled eggs and my friend in the band he said i had a couple of the deviled eggs and he said those had lsd in them you ate the deviled eggs with the lsd in them and my friend was like oh no oh no and he said guys you gotta stick with me man because this is gonna be a crazy night you know, nothing ever happened to him. Nothing ever happened to him. 
They'll drink any deadly poison and won't hurt them at all. Wow. They'll place their hands on the sick people and they'll get well. Well, we can do this. We can pray for sick people and it miraculously we see people get healed. Let's pray for people. And after the Lord had spoken to them, he was taken up to heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. And then the disciples went out and they preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. And so th th these are signs that follow. It's not necessarily you do the signs and then people get there. It's the signs that follow, like my friend in the band. That was in Mystic, Connecticut, actually, that that happened at that party. <laughs> Unbelievable. So let's go everywhere and the Lord will be with us and never leave us. He'll never forsake us and he'll confirm with signs following. Uh, people getting well, lives being changed, uh, him protecting us, watching over us, speaking in new tongues. Hey, so may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you, give you peace. Love you guys. We're going to do Luke next, the Gospel of Luke.